Whenever a really popular celebrity dies, it's basically inevitable we're gonna be hit with lots of conspiracies about why the circumstances surrounding their death aren't really the way that they appear. And there's probably no greater example of this than Kurt Cobain. There are so many conspiracy theories surrounding the death of Kurt Cobain, and yet there's one that's my favorite and you probably haven't heard of it. There's a conspiracy theory that Kurt Cobain faked his death and became Rivers Cuomo of the band Weezer. Now the first thing that a lot of people who are believers in this conspiracy theory will bring up is that Rivers Cuomo and Kurt Cobain have a lot of similar facial features. If you think of Kurt Cobain, he's kind of got like these uh these rugged, uh, bad boy kind of looks, you know, he kind of has a Sawyer from Lost thing going on. You can kind of picture him sneaking off to have himself a manly cry as poignant music plays in the background. And then on the other side, you have Rivers Cuomo, who kind of looks like a lesbian gym teacher. But then, you know, you take those, um, those conceptions we have of how these guys actually look, and you just compare the facial features, because you actually can do a lot to change how a person looks just with their grooming. And you can kind of see in some of these pictures that their noses are very similar, the way their heads are shaped is similar, the ears, although it's kind of hard to find a good picture of Kurt Cobain's ears, they do have those similarities in common. And if you want to throw some fuel on the fire, here's a picture of Rivers Cuomo dressed up as Kurt Cobain. The thing is though, there's one major facial difference, and it's not something that's going to easily be covered up, especially not on a daily basis, you would need plastic surgery to do this, and it's that... Kurt Cobain has a butt chin, but Rivers Cuomo does not, so like, why would you go through that? You know, like, why would you go through that when you could just as easily grow a beard as Rivers does in this picture? Why go through a lengthy, painful surgery procedure for a detail that most people would probably never pick up on? The next aspect of this that people who believe in this conspiracy theory tend to bring up is that Rivers Cuomo is a very big fan of Kurt Cobain, he keeps a book studying his writing and how it works, and in fact, Weezer has played sets of nothing but nerve Nirvana covers on the name Goat Punishment. I actually remember reading about that in Circus Magazine back in the day. First off, we have the notebook that Rivers Cuomo keeps analyzing Kurt Cobain's song structure and things like that, but I don't really think that's that much of a smoking gun for this, considering that that's just a very good way to become a, a better songwriter. And I say this as a musician, there's definitely songs that I've looked at and been like, wow, like I really like how this song works, and you know, you sit down, you learn a song, you change a few notes, you change a few few parts and like you you basically you break it down until you understand why the things you like work the way they do that's a very common approach to becoming a better songwriter. I actually highly recommend that. As for Goat Punishment and the Nirvana covers, a lot of people are quick to say, I don't know man, Rivers Cuomo, he does that Kurt Cobain but a little too good. His playing is a little too dead on and like that to me makes me say, you know what, like Nirvana songs are not hard to play on guitar, like if you've been playing guitar more than like six months and you can't play Nirvana songs, you should just throw your fucking guitar in the garbage, that shit's for beginners. You know, like doing a set of Nirvana covers should not be that difficult, however there is one aspect that people point to that may be a little bit more convincing, I don't know, it's very subjective and the recordings aren't that great, but what people say is that the timbre of Rivers' voice in these covers, as well as his guitar tone, are just way too similar to Kurt's. I'll let you be the judge of that. Here's a Goat Punishment song compared to a Nirvana song. Now, me personally, I'm not terribly convinced by that. It's a pretty accurate cover, but at the same time, you know, it's it's not, to me at least, it doesn't sound so exact that it's like, oh man, this guy is definitely Kurt Cobain trying to fool us. There's a third piece that tends to be a smoking gun for a lot of people, and it's that Nirvana and Weezer, although there's some overlap between like when Weezer was forming and Nirvana was kind of coming to an end, supposedly they had no show dates that overlapped, and there's actually 
believe it or not, records of these show dates. And at the start, it kind of, it fits like a puzzle piece almost. You know, Weezer will have a few shows, and Nirvana won't have any. Nirvana will go out on tour, and then there's no Weezer shows, and you know, it's like a puzzle piece almost. It's kind of interesting that it works out like that. But this is actually something brand new that I noticed that I have never seen brought up in conjunction with this conspiracy theory. There's actually lists of all of the Weezer shows and all of their Nirvana shows, and I found one date of all of the fucking dates that actually overlaps. On June 22nd, 1992, Weezer played a show at a place in Los Angeles called the Coconut Teaser, a venue which they've apparently played many times in that time period. Where was Nirvana on that date? Belfast, Ireland, playing a venue called King's Hall. Now, if accurate, that one date completely destroys this entire conspiracy theory. And granted, there's a chance that maybe somebody put it out there to debunk it, which I don't think that would be the case, considering no one has ever noticed that before. And then there's also a chance that maybe there's just a mistake on one of these lists. I think it'd be more likely that the Weezer show is mistaken, just because Nirvana's date in Belfast coincides with a larger European tour. Ultimately, I don't think this is that convincing of a conspiracy theory, but it's the kind of thing that's fun to think about. But, you know, you really look at these facts, they don't really hold up too well. And then there's just the idea that Kurt Cobain was reportedly very unhappy with life as a celebrity. He wanted his anonymity back, he wanted to just be a guy. So if you want to go back to an ordinary life, why would you then join a band that immediately gets up into a major label deal and becomes one of the other biggest rock bands of all fucking time? This is kind of like the rock music version of the idea that Bill Hicks faked his death and became Alex Jones. It doesn't make that much sense to me, but I don't know, tell me what you guys think. <laughs>